Okay, we're recording. Um, welcome everybody out um, tonight. Our topic is um, compliance. I'd like to excuse Jade Baldwin. She is actually attending the Australia doTERRA convention. And so it's just going to be me and all of you. Um, for those listening, um, you can look this up later on. Uh, topic tonight is compliance. So just go to jadebalden.com and search for compliance. So um, Jade and I gave a talk about compliance um, just uh, um, about July last year at Leadership Retreat in Australia. And, uh, you know, we shared the top. It was my topic. I, I got up and taught, taught everybody about compliance and what they need to do to um, share compliance, um, share essential oils in a compliant way. So what compliance essentially means is that you are, when you are um, selling or teaching people about essential oils, that you do, you represent or you're making claims in a compliant way. Hello, Kayla, Ron. Hello. Um, hi. We just, we just begun. So we're talking about compliance tonight. <clears throat> I was just saying what um, compliance means is that, well, there's two, two components of compliance. Uh, number one is using product claims, and number two is using doTERRA's trademarks. Um, so the first one, using product claims, um, whether when you're making a claim, um, say if you're teaching someone about an essential oil or you're teaching them about some wellness application, some application of an essential oil or any other doTERRA product, um, you have to um, be truthful in making claims. Um, that isn't to say that some of the claims we don't make are, are not truthful and not backed up by things, um, but we just have to be careful when making claims um, with products. Um, Kayla, do you have any um, specific burning questions about compliance that you want me to make sure I address tonight? or? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if I do, um, but I'm glad to review everything because it's something that we always have to be conscious of and, mm. you know, especially those of us who began before the compliance uh, rules came out and we could pretty much say whatever. Now it's hard to sometimes express what we want to without using the new language. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know sometimes um, people are scared to say anything because they, they might say something that's illegal or something. So, so I'll, I'll go through that tonight. And, and one, in general, yeah, Ron? Well, the one I have is uh, the difference between a, a, having a certified site. It seems like having a certified site, there's a lot more information that can be shared on it versus... Uh -huh like on social media type things. That's right, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna go through that. We're gonna look at a chart today. Um, okay. ju just to, just to um, uh, quickly answer your question, your website, um, first of all, most of the compliance rules apply to sharing things online. When you're in your classes, when you're t talking directly to people, or when you print out something, or when you email someone, um, those you can speak freely. Um, you can never make disease claims in any, a disease claim is, is something like this oil will cure this disease or something like that. There are some ways that you can address diseases and um, suggest essential oils and I'll go through that. Um, but when it comes to like your website, um, if it's certified, you're okay to speak as freely as you can um, social, on social media. If it's not certified, you can only speak about the essential oils in a generic term, meaning you can say whatever you want, you can't make disease claims, and you can't use any of the terrorists and names or trademarks. So, um, looks like Ron has joined us as well. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, I hope to answer all these questions, and, and then this, this video will also kind of become a... a um, we, we do have a video out there on compliance. Um, it was, like I said, it was uh, June last year. And, and by the way, um, I, I don't know if you were here when I said that um, Jade is actually in the middle of convention in Australia, so she won't be uh, joining us. Um, so we spoke about this in convention last year. Um, it was in Australia, so it was kind of Australia specific. Um, that video that we have on the website is Australia specific. And things have changed since then. 
So um, let, let me go, I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to go through doTERRA's um, compliance materials and use that as a base of our discussion for tonight. Um, it's good to show you exactly where to get them because you can always stay on, on, um, on top of those. Okay, so here's um, doTERRA's um, page there. If you go under wellness advocates, it's under building. All the resources for builders are under building. You've got under uh, doTERRA tools here, you have brochures and all sorts of things there. Um, but you're looking for, um, you hover over our advocates and under the um, subheading it says doTERRA University, living, sharing, building, you wanna click on building. Um, and this has um, a lot of materials there to help. Like if you wanna find out more about compensation, there you go. Um, organizational structure, this is about strategy, you know where to place people on your teams. Um, most of this stuff is pretty basic, and doTERRA keeps it that, um, that way, so this is very accessible to everybody. Okay, so here we go. It's not called compliance on the website. It's called product claims. Um, and I, I just wanna maybe, um, let, me, let me go ahead and we're gonna review this document first. Actually, um, let me see if I can get that in a, in a bigger format for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having difficulty here. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Um, hopefully, oh, well, now I'm shrinking it. <laughs> there we go. Is that easy to see? Yeah, that's better. Okay. All right. So, um, like I said, compliance has two components to it. How you can use doTERRA's trademarks and how you can talk about doTERRA's products. Um, so, here, um, and so that's kind of intermingled here. Um, and, and like I say, if you're in your classes or something, um, to uh, compliance still applies um, you, um, in the sense that you can never make disease claims, you can never make false, uh, not false claims, but um, like say this will cure this disease. And we'll, I'll go through what that means in a little bit. Um, here we go, so static websites. So this, these are things that are not approved. You can get your website certified by doTERRA, um, which is a very easy process, and I'll show you how to do that um, later on. Um, if you don't have it certified, however, um, you can make approved cl uh, claims from the approved claim claims list, or you can talk about essential oils generically. Those are the only two things you'd be able to do on your website. Um, the Terra replicated website, that's the mydoterra.com um, slash whatever your name or your number is, um, that you have a little bit more leeway there. You can um, use doTERRA's trademarks and um, you know um, do the trademark side of things and you can use approved claims, right? And you can also sell essential oils, obviously. There's only, I, I wanna point out, there's only one place that you can sell essential oils online and that is to your replicated website. So um, if um, you are in person, you can obviously um, sell the oils that you have and, and collect that um, for whatever price you charge for that. Okay, um, so you're talking about essential oils. When it comes to social media, um, you're, it's very open. You can do a lot of things. You can post anything with doTERRA's name on it. You can say, say everything. You just can't make disease claims, okay? Um, you can use doTERRA's uh, name and trademarks, uh, and everything, but you can't use doTERRA's name for your like Facebook page. You can't say, Joe Schmo, a doTERRA advocate. Um, in, yeah, you can't use that as the name of your Facebook page. So um, yeah, you have to be careful there. And also using doTERRA's images for your Facebook uh, um, profile photo or something like that. 
So um, other than that, um, and you can't sell essential oils. I know like on Facebook, they have a place where you can sell things. Um, you're not allowed to sell essential oils through that site. Um, but you can always sell essential oils, you know, directly with someone without um, those sort of websites. So uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter, very, very open in a lot of things you can do. When it comes to online training, Facebook classes, webinars, um, all sorts of things like that, you're also, it's also very open. It's the same as social media. So like this, um, what we're doing, the online class tonight, this is uh, very open. We can talk about a lot of things. Um, I can use doTERRA's name, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just can't um, sell you essential oil. I will make a disease claim. <laughs> okay, so um, that's that. Let me get back to um, Tara's website and let's let's talk about what that means. Okay, so um, so that kind of breaks it down into the different areas of online. Um, you've got your uh, website, but if you have your website um, uh, certified. Um, now, I, I know, uh, now Ron, you've got the certification already, you've applied for it, you've, you've got the, that's right, you've got the, the thing, you just need to, and you put it on your website, right? It's all done. Okay. Okay, if you go on to jbalden.com and type in compliance, um, you can bring up the, compl the compliance page. There's that old video I was talking about. Um, for those of you that are watching this uh, after the fact, there is a link there um, called www.doterracertifiedsite.com uh, slash registration. Just simply click on that and it will take you to a page where you just need to fill out this form. It's very easy to get um, certified. Everybody that I've recommended um, do this has been able to get on there and get their site certified with no problems at all. There was one person that had mentioned um, uh, something about the Modern Essentials book um, and you know they just had to take that language out um, and then it, it was approved for certification. So just put your name, wellness advocate, number, your rank, URL, and th this other website, that's where you would put your YouTube um, account, your Facebook uh, account and everything. So all that's gonna be included in, in the certification. That's how I understand it. So that's how you get your website certified. Once it's certified, then you can, the difference is now you can use doTERRA's trademarks. Um, that would, um, whereas if you don't have a certified site, just a regular um, website that hasn't been certified, um, you can, use approved claims, you can talk about essential oils ger generically, but you can't use the terrorist trademarks. Okay, and that's what, that's what I was talking about. Oh, there's a um, <laughs> zoom button there. So there's, uh, um, that would um, not, that's not what this is talking about there. Okay, so um, when it comes to approved claims, um, there are certain things you can say about essential oils and doTERRA has published a list of approved claims. So uh, for any product out there, for like Abrevite, uh, for instance, there is a list here of claims that you can make. You can also go to the um, essential oil itself. Uh, you can find the, you know, look it up. Anything that doTERRA publishes on their website, anything that they say about essential oils, you can basically parrot that to someone else. Um, for instance, um, primary benefits for Abrevite protects against environmental and seasonal threats. Environmental and seasonal threats, it basically means um, uh, mic microorganisms, um, bacteria, a virus, and those sorts of things. Um, this says environmental threats. It's a more uh, encompassing uh, claim. Uh, so it's... Uh, um, I guess it's, it's safer to make. So doTERRA, this is, you know, whenever uh, a essential oil is antimicrobial or antiviral, you'll see the claim, um, the legal claim listed here as protects against environmental threats or helps support the body's immunity. Um, so we just need to couch our language in those terms. Um, so let me go back to this list. It, it'll become it'll become a lot e uh, simpler. If if you are preparing handouts or if you're preparing material for um, posting online, 
Um, it's very helpful to come and look at these approved claims. Sometimes um, it, it's, it's helpful to just take this and put it into your own words, uh, staying as true to the claim as possible. Like, um, here we go, a birch, uh, diffuse for a sweet uplifting aroma. Um, you can say, you know, birches gives a uplift, uh, will uplift your spirits um, when you diffuse it. That's also going to fall within the uh, approved claim limits of that because you're not going beyond what this is claiming. Commonly, commonly used for oral hygiene products. So birch, I don't know if you know, but birch um, helps whiten your teeth. Um, let, let me go back to the, let's see what it says on birch. Of course, birch is not an essential oil that um, doTERRA sells on a regular basis. But um, we would uh, sw uh, swish it in our mouth or something like that. Um, so, you know, commonly used in oral hygiene. It would, when, whenever you say, um, well, let me, get, let me get to that. But, but whenever you say something um, improves the appearance, that's okay to say. When you say something, um, improves your emotions, your mood, or, or your appearance, or, or something that is not related to um, phys physical um, symptoms at all, like energy, or um, releasing emotions, or all those sorts of things. All safe area. You can talk about those things. So this will uh, make you appear more beautiful. This will uh, make you smell better. This will make you um, not smell as bad. This will improve the appearance of uh, wrinkles. Um, this will uh, lift your mood. This will calm you. Um, so, I, I, but you can't say something like this will um, this will stop your stress. Um, this will eliminate stress in your life. You can say this uh, will calm you and um, relieve anxieties that sort of thing. And Ben, we can also say that it supports different body systems, right? Yes, and that's generally the way that you would, like if someone, the hardest thing to do is when someone comes up and asks you, um, my friend has Alzheimer's, what can I do? What oil can I give to my friend? So you, you can't really say Alzheimer's, you take this oil for Alzheimer's and it will help your Alzheimer's. You can't say that. That's a disease claim. But what you can say is Alzheimer's is a cognitive um, disease. Um, it has to do with memory and everything. Some essential oils that will support memory function. Frankincense is very good for, uh, to support the memory function. Um, and also frankincense is known to cross the blood-brain barrier. And so it will be able to get in there and improve cognitive function as well. So those are the sort of things that you would read on um, frankincense's page there's frankincense support healthy cellular function uh, feelings of re relaxation and cellular function and here if um frankincense i there's so much that frankincense does and i i feel this this page here really doesn't um do it um do it justice but um, support healthy cellular function. Well, that gives you a, a big, um, I mean, it's all about cells in our body, right? <laughs> so yeah. you can say um, this will support the cellular function of those um, cells within your brain. Um, you know, you want to stay with, within the bounds here, um, but that, that's what I would do. I would say, um, so frankincense supports your co cognitive functions, memory, improves memory. Um, or supports the memory um, um, abilities. So yeah, that, that's how you would approach it. Um, instead of saying, like, for diabetes, you take this. That's not, I mean, that's not really along the lines of the essential oil paradigm anyways, because one oil might work for someone and it would not, may not work at all for someone else. So everybody has different bodies. When it comes to drugs, yeah, one drug might work the same for everybody. It might kill off um, two or three of them in the process. But when, with essential oils, um, you know, it's, it's a hit or miss, and it really determines uh, – it also relies upon what um, is the cause of 
that specific symptom. So, um, like I said, you can go to the, the oil page itself, you can go to the approved claims um, to, to get some ideas to start with. Like if you're preparing a handout and you wanna talk about the 10 um, essential oils in the family um, physician kit, just copy and paste there or put it in your own words, staying within the claim um, with that. This uh, compliance, this uh, FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions, um, is very helpful if you haven't if, if you feel like you have a lot of questions with compliance this is a really good one to um, you know go through and and review it it hasn't been updated for a while and doTERRA has come out and they've said things about you know we can now make we can now mention diseases in our online um, talking about essential oils um, but not necessarily, that doesn't mean we can make disease claims. Um, they want us to share stories um, everywhere, on, online or, you know. And so we, um, when producing stuff for, with, with Jade and me, we are a lot more um, open to answering questions uh, or addressing things with the essential oils and sharing stories because um, stories it's just one person's anecdotal um, experience of it. Um, but we need to make sure that we're not, because um, sometimes some, some of the stories and experiences that we have are very fantastic. People have these fantastic results, but we just have to make sure that people remember that everybody's experience is gonna be different. So Jade likes, you know, there's a few uh, instances where she's helped people that have had cancer. And the way we, uh, we, the way we approach this is, you know, cancer happens at a cellular level. So we um, make your body as healthy as possible on a cellular cellular level. And you can go to jbalden.com slash cancer and, and read all about that. It's all about becoming as healthy as possible and um, doing as much as we can to do to overcome or to uh, strengthen our cells as much as possible. But sometimes when she's telling those stories of, you know, this person uh, had cancer and, I, and we did this and we went through all these things and they got better. And this person had cancer and they got better. We have to, we have to say, uh, we, we just have to make sure that we're not implicitly making the claim that if you do these six things, you will overcome cancer. We have to make sure it's clear in our words to say, this is supporting the body system in your body, um, improving your body's chances to overcome such and such a disease or whatever. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. I know you've probably heard a lot of this before. And, and for those people that are hearing this for the first time, um, it's good to go through that, that compliance uh, frequently asked question thing. But just bear in mind that that's, uh, that's been put together for a few years now. And um, doTERRA is uh, becoming more and more um, loose and relax or relax when it comes to that and just last uh, couple weeks doTERRA has come out and said look we and in fact it was at leadership retreat in uh, Orlando um, doTERRA said look we doTERRA is partnering with lots of universities lots of uh, scientific areas um, scientific research studies or reports um, are being published in medical journals and all that sort of thing um, and we are going to be able to use these things in talking about essential oils. It's going to it's going to be a lot more um, a lot more of an ability to um, make claims that are backed up by science. But right now, if you find a um, a report of something uh, online somewhere, um, and it's not on the approved claims, um, I would still be careful of how you how you use that. Using the uh, Modern Essentials book is a, is a good thing, and you should use it in your class. Um, there is uh, a, someone on our team who had a modern, uh, spoke about the Modern Essentials book on their website, and um, the compliance uh, department asked them to take that down. So if you're, we, if you're mentioning a lot of books, um, you know, and you're saying this is a book about essential oils, um, in a list of other books that you're recommending, 
that's going to be okay. But if you're specifically, um, if it looks like, you know, you know doTERRA and, uh, like the modern essentials book or the, um, what's the other book called the uh, oil life something. Yeah. I can't yeah. Remember. If, if you're saying that these books uh, go hand in hand, um, then it can be interpreted by the lay individual that these claims are being made by doTERRA, but through a third party. So um, modern essential book, um, fantastic book. It's a reference guide. Um, it's not specific to doTERRA, although all of its products in there are covered by, are just the doTERRA products. Um, just, known by a different name so um doTERRA doesn't want um to come across as they're promoting this book although their offices are right across the street <laughs> from each other so it's 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 just a delicate situation that you have to um but if you are recommending some books um just make sure that when, when you when you talk to people in in person when you're talking to them on social media that's okay you uh, uh, tell everybody to buy the Modern Essentials book because it's fantastic, or the other book. Um, but if you're if you're talking to people, um, like a, putting on a website or something, you just want to be careful to to make sure that you know you're not saying all the claims made in this are uh, are uh, you know apply to their tires essential oils. All right, so now I want to I want to go into what claims are and 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 what type of claims we can make and what type of claims we should avoid. Um, so here's, uh, this document is called the Quick uh, Claims Guide. And then um, I'll go through a few, I think we'll skip website claims, just because it's so easy to get your website um, certified by doTERRA. Okay, so um, a claim means something that you say an, an essential oil will do. Or, or wellness products, um, any product of doTERRA is something that, um, like a therapeutic benefit from that um, product. So you can't use um, disease claims. That's, that's, if you, it's all you remember, I think you'll be okay. <laughs> um, so what does that mean? You can't use words such as disease, illness, cure, treat, repair, chronic. So just have those be red flags in the back of your mind. Um, you can't refer to the disease or illness such as cancer, diabetes, autism, flu, etc. The terrorists come back a little bit on this and they say you can refer to the disease, but you can't say that this oil treats this disease or you should use this oil when you have this disease. What you need to say is, oh, so like uh, um, diabetes, for instance. Diabetes has to do with insulin right, the uh, release of insulin that has to do with metabolism. Um, and um, so you want to support your bodies in, in those areas. You want to get your body as he healthy as possible. Always one of the, um, the easiest claim to make is just get your body as healthy as possible. Lifelong vitality pack, um, um, detox. Um, that's a 30-day cleanse and restore. That's always, uh, you can always make that um, suggestion no matter what people um what disease or symptom people come up with when it comes to diet so that's about getting the body stronger making the body more healthy in in general um so with diabetes um there's a there's a diabetic there's a i wouldn't say diabetical blend it's an insulin blend if you always refer to things in the in the in the positive imagine if if um we draw a line um and Everything that has to do with people that are sick is on the left. Everything that has to do with people that are that's well is on the right. So they're healthy and well, they're on the right, and sick, they're on the left. We can't really um, address the people who are sick, right? So we're addressing the people who are well. Say so to, to get well, to stay well, these are the things that you need to do. So to have, um, so diabetes has to do with insulin, right? So to maintain um, a healthy insulin um, response system, that's, we're talking about body systems, uh, you should take, you should do this, 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 and this, right? So it, it addressing the disease without 
uh, it's addressing the absence of the disease, I guess is probably the easy way to say it. Um, also, cold flu, the easiest way to say, so someone says, oh, what, what should I tell someone who has the cold? Well, you say, um, you need, a cold is, you know, happens when your immune system is, um, you know, um, compromised in some way. And so what you need to do is establish a healthy immune system. Um, on guard is probably one of the best essential oil blends um, that you can use to boost your immunity, support your immune system. And that's what that's what you would recommend for a cold anyways. But you're 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 talking about okay, that cold or that disease or that symptom has to do with this body system. Um, so to strengthen that body system, we would use these products. Yep. So that's, that's, that's the way around it. So doTERRA has now said you can talk, you can refer to the disease, but you can't say that this, um, this product is, should be used for that disease. It sounds like, you know, we're just pulling it at sticks. Um, but really we're just being careful, um, with the impressions that we get, uh, give to people. You've got to understand that, um, with essential oils, if people, have come to your class and they're, they're desperate. They're looking for a solution. And you, and for some reason, they, they, they come away thinking that you told them that if they take these six oils, it will cure their disease. Imagine if they go home relying on what you said, they buy the products, they take the oils, um, and maybe they haven't even followed their, um, what their do medical doctors have said that can create a huge liability because we know essential oils work differently for everybody. And it really um, has to do with, you know, what's the cause of it as well. So we don't really want to, I mean, it could be deceptive um, in the, you know, at the very extreme um, could be a deceptive practice to say, this will do this. Um, when we know that, you know, these six, if you have these, uh, you could try these six oils. If that doesn't work, try these six oils. And that's how the reference guides um, talk about it anyways. And that's, that's been our experience. So it's, it's a fairer way. It's a more truthful way of representing what the essential oils do. Okay, don't refer to a symptoms of a disease such as cough, sneezing. Again, I think that's the same in the lines of this. Um, if you have a cough, well, that coughs have to do with your respiratory system. One of the uh, best ways to boost your respiratory system is the breathe essential oil blend. So I haven't, I haven't said use breathe for a cough, um, but I've talked about the body system and I'm supporting the body system. That is absolutely the best way to do it. It's, it's compliant. It's fair. It's, it's, um, that's how we should be re representing the products. Don't recommend a product as a substitute for a drug. Um, it's not essential oils versus drugs. It's not essential oils versus doctors. So we need to get that out of our head. Um, <laughs> we, we need to stop people from, we, um, I think, um, and this is, this is my personal philosophy, is that if you are healthy, you don't need to go to the doctor. If you are healthy, you don't need to go take a drug. All right, besides the routine physical or whatever you might need for like space camp or something. <laughs> Um, if so, like in my family, we haven't had to go to the doctor for, um, a long time, um, just because we haven't had the need. If we broke an arm, sure. We're going to go to the doctor because there's an essential oil. You, I mean, I would probably use helichrysium and deep blue and everything for that broken arm, but it probably needs to be in a cast probably ha should have someone look at it. Um, someone a professional look at it. Um, so we're not saying essential oils replace drugs. Often you do hear people say, oh, I've got 17 prescription drugs and I want to get off them. Everybody wants to get off the prescription drugs. Prescription drugs are unhealthy. Um, they're, they have toxins in them. They are expensive. Um, they have a lot of side effects. Um, doctors want you to get off your, well, some doctors want you to be on as many drugs as possible, um, maybe because they get some money from it or something. That, that may be a conspiracy theory. I don't know. 
most uh, good, honest doctors uh, will want you want you not to take as want you to take as little drugs as possible. I had a doctor in Australia. Loved this doctor. Um, you know, I said I had a cough. He said, "Okay, just cough it up." I'm like, "Yes, I love that." You know, I don't have to go taking some chemicals uh, into my body to stop the coughing because the coughing is supposed to be there for a purpose. You know, and even pharmacists, pharmacists, I know a lot of pharmacists that won't give their children drugs. And these are doctors of drugs, right? Um, Because they know what's in them. They know um, the harm that drugs can do. So it's not essential oils versus drugs. It's drugs versus uh, drugs. And we're not saying essential oils are a substitute for drugs. We're saying, let's remove the need for drugs. And people can, get, can go back to their doctor and say, look, here's my prescription. I would really like to take a, no pills at all or as very little as possible. Could you uh, please um, you know, do a physical, do a checkup and um, tell me what, um, what, if anything, you can take off of my prescription list? So um, that, that you should do on a regular basis. Some people find that they've been taking an extra drug for a year and they, they no longer had need for that um, just because it hasn't been reviewed. So that should be a, a review and reduce policy with their um, doctor. I haven't had a prescription personally for maybe 10 years. Um, it's not something that a healthy person should need. So you want to help people get to that point in their lives where they're healthy and they don't need to um, go to the doctor or get a drug. So never recommend a product as a substitute for a drug. Um, that language would sound something like, oh, instead of taking your painkiller, take this. Or instead of taking your, um, your antidepressant, um, and, uh, you know, inhale this essential oil three times a day or something like that. That's, that's a no-no, and that's, that should sound wrong to you anyways. So um, I, think I've, I think I've explained that one and how you would go about it. Um, you just want people to get to a healthy state. Just always remember the healthy side. If you've got that line, everybody over here is sick, everybody over here is healthy. That's where we're focusing. We're focusing on the healthy people. So don't recommend a pro, uh, product as an augment or a therapy of a drug. And don't imply a disease claim through pictures or symbols. Um, it's not just on what we say, it's what the, you know, the overall picture. So that's what we have to be careful when we're telling all these stories and it starts to come across to sound like, Oh, if you do this, this, and this, you'll be cured. <laughs> you just need to make sure people know that it will increase your chances of um, being well again. So, uh, okay, I think that, that pretty much um, covers all those don'ts. Now, you can always use, um, like I said, emotions, free reign. You can say anything you want to do about emotions. Citrus bliss, lift your emotions, it'll um, lift your mood, it'll make you the happiest person on the planet, it will make you a giggle with glee all day long. That is a safe claim to make, even though it may not be entirely, um, <laughs> you know, uh, up and up. A cosmetic claims, you can say those till the cows come home, this will make you beautiful, this will make the guys fall all, all over you. Anything that has to do with appearance or mood or anything of those, free reign. Don't even worry about it. Um, now, the next one is I want to talk about is structure function claims. Um, this uh, only with products labeled for internal use. So this is not, we're not talking about things that you're taking aromatically or that you're applying topically. But if you're taking um, it internally, um, just be careful with these. You can say these things, but there's a disclaimer you need to put on structure function claims. And that's the, um, um, where is the disclaimer? These statements have not been evaluated by the Food or Drug Administration. This product is not intended for it to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. When you're in the United States, this is what you're saying. When you're outside of the United States, you can just, instead of saying Food or Drug Administration, because that's very um, uh, US centric, uh, you would just say the name of, um, or you just say um, the governing authority in that country, not evaluated by the government. Just leave it at that. Okay, so this is what a structure function claim is. Um, structure function claim 
oh, well, here's a definition right here. Claims that um, a product helps the body stay healthy and function normally or contribute to general well-being. You can say these all the time. Um, you, when you're talking in your, in your classes, obviously, these are all things you can say. The only thing you can't say in your class are these disease claims and, and everything kind of related to them. Um, this has to do with you posting things online, even, even on a um, certified website um, by doTERRA. And that's why I, I would recommend that you put an asterisk on next to this and put it in the footer of your website. Um, and it, when, when you're sharing things on social media, not, not so much so. You don't have to have this on everything you share in social media. You might have it somewhere on your, on your page, though. Okay. So this is um, basically helping you stay healthy. This will help, like we, we were talking about um, with the um, uh, body systems. Is this making sense, Kayla? Yep, you're doing great. Refer to normal conditions associated with natural state of process. So um, if you're talking about fever, um, it has to be something that you would naturally, I, I, don't, I can't think of any reason that you would naturally have a fever, but for it, something like a morning sickness, uh, nausea during the first few months of pregnancy, or for some ladies all, all during the pregnancy, that's a normal thing to feel. You're not sick. And so that's a, that becomes a structure function claim because this is something a normal person would feel. Hot flashes during menopause. There you go. Um, you should always use qualifiers such as mild, typically normal, or occasional, like occasional headaches. That's okay, occasional upset stomachs. You know what? This is life. We occasionally get um, sick. Muscle soreness following exercise. If you're not getting sore after you exercise a lot, maybe you're not exercising hard enough on that. <laughs> um, if you just start a, uh, an exercise routine, you haven't done it for a while, or you're you pushing yourself a little bit, you're going to get um, muscle soreness. That doesn't mean that you're sick. Um, so what that means is you're making a structure function claim. And you just have to um, say, you know, these haven't been evaluated. This is not in intended to uh, diagnose, treat, or cure, or prevent disease. Just make sure this is understood by the people that, that you're, te you're te teaching. And if people ask you, oh, are you licensed, are you qualified to teach about essential oils? You know what you should tell them? What do you think? Kayla, have you ever, ever asked, have you ever had someone ask you what your qualifications are to teach about essential oils? I haven't. <laughs> I remember one time I was sitting in a class and there was these ladies uh, sitting around the table. One of them got a call from their husband. She was the host act, hostess, actually. Um, and her husband's like, what is this lady's qualifications? And she says, oh, my husband wants to know what your qualifications are of teaching about essential oils. And Jade just looked at her and said, I have no qualifications whatsoever. <laughs> and that's the absolute truth. And you know what? It shut them up. And then, you know, they just believed everything we said after that because we weren't making up qualifications. Sometimes when people are teaching their uh, classes, they, they get to the sense that, you know what, I, there's so much to know about essential oils. I want to go get a, a certificate of aromatherapy before I go out and teach my classes. It's, it's actually going to harm your efforts. <laughs> It, um, I think Jay uh, went and did that once, and um, it's like it was really, really, really basic um, compared to what learning you get when you're using, when, when you're in doTERRA, and when you're actually doing the business. When you're doing the business, when you're sharing, when you're teaching with people, when you're reading about it, and you know, actually getting into it. Your, your knowledge is going to skyrocket. If you're going to sit on the sidelines and, and attend some, um, you know, certificate class somewhere, um, you're, the stuff that you will be learning, I guarantee you, is going to be 10 years out of date because the, the amount of research and development that is happening um, in the world today is so um, quick that, you know, any course that they put together, 
will be out of date within six months. So um, don't feel uh, pressured that you have to be qualified in some way. Just tell them, honestly, I love essential oils. This is what they did for me and my family. I'm not qualified to teach essential oils. I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm not a nutrition person. I'm not a health coach. But I'm a mother. I, and I'm not a mother. I'm a father. <laughs> and I, we use essential oils in our family. No one can argue with that. And you know what? It'll sound more um, genuine, more authentic, and, you know, it'll make it'll connect more with people because when you are an expert sometimes people think you're you know you're a little bit more um distant okay so that's structure function claims um that's uh, we talked about the fda disclaimer should be on printed material as well so if you're printing something out and you, you know if you go on to doTERRA's um, things anything with an asterisk here that's a structure function claim and you see their asterisk relates to this. Um, there's their, um, what do you call it? Their FDA dis, uh, disclaimer. So like I said, probably the best thing to do is put that in, and that's what I've done on the websites, um, put that on the footer of your website. And so if you talk about something and you, you, you remember, oh, this, is, this has to do with body systems, this has to do with staying healthy, just put an asterisk by it and it'll be referenced at the bottom of, the, of your footer. Okay, so I think we basically smashed that. So let's, um, and I think we've actually covered most everything here. Um, I just, uh, so here's, here's some examples of things. Um, lowers cholesterol, so that's a disease claim. Soothes arthritis pain, relieves insomnia. The thing you can say is it relieves occasional sleeplessness. I would just say it supports your body's ability to get a healthy sleep. Um, for occasional ear disc, ear infections, basal, right? <laughs> for occasional ear discomfort, just throw in the word occasional. What the heck? <laughs> Reduces, supports, relieves occasional tension instead of aching or pain. Um, so that is kind of we're kind of talking in code, aren't we? Um, yeah. when, you, when you're saying environmental threats, that means bacteria and viruses tensions that means aches and pains I like <laughs> obesity <laughs> that means weight loss <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we i think we get the the idea there any questions you ron or um anybody else on the call do you have any other questions well no well, I, I just had a thought that when you were talking about attending classes or whatever that are going to be out of date, that's a really good reason to go to convention every year is to stay up on the new information. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen some of the things that Jade's posted. Um, <laughs> she, she got some ideas and she goes into her blogs and up, upstate things, updates things. Uh -huh. and you know what? You're staying right on the top of it because this, this stuff is coming out and you're absolutely right, Kayla. Um, it's a that's a perfect reason to stay up to date um, with you know and go attending convention. I think attending convention itself will pretty much take care of all that um, educational component. DoTerra does have those occasion uh, occasional. See, I'm using it all the time. Now. <laughs> <laughs> occasional painful um, things. <laughs> what what was it? Um, Wellness summits. I think it's under building. They have um, essential wellness education. Oh, what is the? What's a new? They're having those webinars. Yeah, here it is. Life, life empowered life series webinars. So you can attend all these uh, webinars that DoTerra puts on. Um, there's there's one and I've I've missed a few of these. <laughs> you register. There's Clary Sage, so you can get in there. Again, these I, I feel like these are pretty basic things as well. Um, but that's they what. Good though. I I did that women's health one. Um, yeah. Well, how'd you find it? And it was really good. It was under the March one that you just clicked on. Oh, this one. 
Yeah, and it was it was all about women's health. Teresa Harding and Chelsea Stevens and Marissa Snyder. I don't know how to say her name. Yeah. But they they went pretty in depth. It was really good. Good, 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 good. I've attended a few of them, and and, and um, I think it's helpful. Um, these are some of the top leaders that are um, sharing it. It depends on how much time um, you have in your schedule, um, but definitely there's there's one thing to do um, as well. I think the best thing to do is uh, attend the attend convention. Yeah. All right. Um, just to we're we're almost through here. Um, I'm just going to make a few quick um, things about social media. One thing that you can't do is use um, DoTerra's images, trademark, trade dress, and cover photos or your email address in your um, uh, Facebook page name or anything like that. Just use your name. Just be yourself. Um, don't try to say that you are doTERRA. That's what doTERRA wants to avoid. Just say you are yourself and you are teaching people about essential, uh, doTERRA's essential oils. That's good enough. So, um, of course, disease claims are always off, are always out. Don't imply them. Um, you can use doTERRA, doTERRA's trademarks, um, their names and um, pictures and everything, um, but just not in the title of your page or your profile photo, your profile image. You can't say, oh, I'm actually an on guard bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but look at how many things you can do. I'm not even going to go through them because you, you know, you, you can do pretty much, you can talk about anything, you can say anything, you can share anything uh, about essential oils. Um, um, yeah, I, basically it's, it's free, um, free for all. As long as you're not making disease claims, you can use doTERRA's trademarks, um, all, all that sort of stuff. So post your classes on um, Facebook if you so wish. So, do you think I covered everything um, there, Kayla? We left anything out? I've I've gone through my list. I think it was pretty comprehensive. You have any questions yourself? Okay, yeah, I think some um, for for you, and um, it may be a bit of a review, but it's very helpful to know, you know, what. Um, I just see some people they're 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 scared um, to to say something about um, a product or something. Mm -hmm. If if that's the um, my advice, if you feel like you're, that's you, if you feel like you're in that situation, and you you know we've gone through all this, you feel like maybe you still don't grasp it yet, and you still don't know what to say. The very at the very least, you have the approved claims, and you can start there. But if you still are not so confident, uh, you know, when you teach a class, first of all, this doesn't apply to classes necessarily. You know, just don't make disease claims and you'll be safe with your classes, okay? Um, and if you still are not confident on that, err on the side of doing it and messing up. <laughs> I, it'd be much better for you to go out there and accidentally make a few um, claims that you shouldn't have and just learn by doing it. Um, than to sit back in fear and not make any progress. So that's my advice to um, everybody out there. What do you think? Yeah. Well, um, I think it's just a matter of learning the new language. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just using different words. So if you have to script it out for a few times using this uh -huh. names list, write down what you're going to say about everything, then you'll learn that language and then it'll be more yeah. natural. Yep. Yep. Um, I think there's probably five or six different um, translations that we have for things, aren't there? Yeah. Um, so if you if you're talking about antibacterial, antiviral, or something like that, that's a um, support <laughs> micro um, in, protects against uh, environmental threats. Or yep. I, I I like to say micro. Uh, what did I say? Organisms? Micro, uh, um, microbacteria, uh, no, I can't say that. <laughs> the micro antibacterial threats or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I need something that helps with memory right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll call that a night. Um, I'll go ahead and stop the video. Another good thing about attending these online classes is that um, things we can't say on the video, you can go ahead and stay on and ask things and we can maybe be a little bit more loosely um, with uh, compliance stuff. So I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody that's on the um, recording. Goodbye and thank you for listening and coming. There, the recording stopped. Um, if you guys have any other questions that you'd like to ask on anything, um, I'm, I'm here for you right now. It still says record at the top of my screen. Oh.